letters appear in many words which are used when talking about drag racing today. Pro, as in prototypes, proceeds, progress, promotions, profession. Having a schedule which boasts of nearly 20 national events, drag racing is now being referred to as the sport of the 70s. And one of the prime movers in the evolution of drag racing has been the Plymouth Rapid Transit System. What's it like to be a full-time drag racer? To be sure it's not all big checks and trophy queens, there's a lot of hard work and heartbreaks in between. Let's hear the story from some of Plymouth's pros. You get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you go out to the track tomorrow, and you run all day, and then you come back tomorrow afternoon, and you work you know, till late tomorrow night, or maybe all night, making sure that everything's ready to go back again Saturday. And it's not just a, a 9 to 5 job, that's for sure. Never but we enjoy it, right? That's right. I think it was two years ago that I decided I was either going to do better or quit. Because the hours I put in, if I would pick another profession, I would have to make as much money, maybe more, for less hours. You put all that you have into it, put all your energy and all of your money and your time into it to make it, uh, make your car run as good as what it can, to make your car look, you know, look as good as what it can. Sometimes I tend to psych myself out by just by worrying about the, the clutch and worrying about the motor and that's what i constantly think about just the whole machine all pros in a tough game called the sport of the 70s a sport which traces its origin to the wastelands of southern california there it was nurtured carefully by tough sportsmen this is where drag racing came from in the 30s and into the 40s, cars raced against the clock in straightaway time trials on the dusty, windswept dry lakes and salt flats, baked by an unmerciful sun. That's where the drag action was. By 1946, Southern California Timing Association had some 25 clubs, and a major meet would draw 200 or more cars. The cars ran the gamut of creativity, with speed, the sole objective. In the middle 40s, this was the look. Flatheads, four bangers, running with V8s and even V12s on inactive military strips. A lot of $300 mustering out checks put the hot rodders back on wheels. Then came men like Stu Hilburn, magicians with carburetors, camshafts, fuel, and the like. Some real motor science. They tamed the V8s, added streamlined chassis, and proceeded to break the 150 mile an hour barrier. By the middle 50s, drag racing had its basic ground rules and definition. An acceleration contest over a quarter mile distance from a standing start. A single car run or a competitive run between two cars. A rear engine dragster, oh, little did they realize then what they had. Ingenuity is the real heart of drag racing, but the sport is still trial and error. And that's the fun of it. In 1951, the first Chrysler Hemi engine came on the scene. It took a couple of years to harness the power of this giant of an engine, but most of the pros realized then it could be the foundation power plant for years to come. As more horsepower became available, the drag tire got more attention. By 1959, Jack Chrisman really going after the speed records. 181 miles an hour. The stock cars were given their own class. Drag racing had moved to a new era. 
By 1963, the stock car had its place. The grandstands a population explosion. And in the NHRA Nationals, it's a pair of super stock wedges for the championship. Sixty-four winter nationals. Ever the innovator, Don Garlitz, relied on Penny Power to propel his winged racer to a double-A fuel win. 1966, Sagan Pomona, a tough team, comes in from North Carolina. Ronnie Sox, driver. Buddy Martin, team manager. Jake King, master engine builder. This the meet in which Shirley Shahan becomes the first woman ever to win a major drag racing championship as she defeats Joe Smith in another Kenny Plymouth and takes the super stock title. 1967, Thunder Valley, Bristol, Tennessee. National Hot Rod Association Spring National. Even more professionalism obvious. The best drag equipment ever. Like this sleek Plymouth with Ronnie Sox. In the other lane, Ron Mancini. Another record crowd to watch. And it's Ronnie Sox winning the Super Stock Eliminator title. Back to Indy again in 68 for the NHRA Nationals. First time total prize monies for a meet had gone past $150,000. And again, it's a Plymouth. In the Super Stock Finals, Arlen Banky of Akron, Ohio, against Wally Wilson in his Midwest Auto Special. As Arlen Banky, Super Stock V. And at the top end, it's Akron Arney for the win. After a long winter's work, the 69 national racing events begin in Pomona, California. Bigger crowds, bigger prize monies, and the most professional field of drag racers ever assembled. This describes the NHRA Winter Nationals, where longtime regional champion Don Bruther burst in the national prominence by defeating Jerry Harvey's Cobra Jet Mustang to pick up all the gold and with it, the Superstock Eliminator title. to Phoenix, Beeline Dragway, the site of the American Hot Rod Association's Winter National. It is here that Ronnie Sox is honored by AHRA President Jim Tice as the Association's Driver of the Year. As if to prove that this award is in the right hands, Sox proceeds to win top stock eliminator honors and his fleet Henny Roadrunner, performing by this Mustang with a strong pop in charge. Arlen Banky completed the Plymouth sweep at V-Line as the 68 national champ four speeds his Hemi Cuda past Ed Terry's Cobra Jet for an easy super stock eliminator championship. Further proof of Plymouth's drag strength shown at the NHRA Indy National. Here, the personable team of Tritac and Morgan take their war wagon, the venerable wedge-powered Plymouth wagon that has terrorized the East Coast for years to a decisive stock eliminator championship. The red, white, and blue Cuda of Sox and Martin backs up the super stock eliminator crown they won at the 69 Spring Neck by once again defeating the strongest super stock in the nation pick up a second major eliminator crown for the year. A figure that would go to three for too long. As the popular Burlington, North Carolina duo would go on to win the NHRA World Point Finals at Dallas later in the year. In top fuel, Don the Snake Prudhomme was a picture of consistency. He notched his second Indy National top fuel eliminator title in his Plymouth powered digger. He outran Kelly Brown for the big win. He would not have made it this far without a strong assist from the weatherman. A brief rain shower gave him the time necessary to replace a broken engine between rounds. 1970 has been referred to as the super season, as NHRA expanded its schedule of national events to seven, and AHRA instituted its 10-race Grand American Championship. The crowds were bigger than ever. The purses were, too, and a new class of cars the pro stocks emerged, bringing the fans to their feet whenever they ran. From Plymouth's point of view, 1970 was truly a super season, as notables like Sox and Martin, Don Grother, Arlen Banky, 
And Don Prudhomme carried the rapid transit system's colors to the winner's circle again and again and again. At Indianapolis, the Pro Stock Eliminator Final saw Arlen Banker racing Sutton Park in an all Hemi Duster contest. got their first to claim their second straight Indy National Crown and their second straight NHRA Pro Stock Eliminator Championship in NHRA competition for the year. The Snake, Don Prudhomme, one of the most intense competitors in drag racing today, picked up his third Indy National Fuel Eliminator title by defeating Jim Nickel in the final run. Veteran observers claim this was the most spectacular drag race ever seen. Both drivers recorded sub six and a half second run. Trudeau, six, four, five, quick enough to nip Nickel at the finish line. Then, disaster. Nickel's clutch explodes, saws his car in half. The roll cage section with Jim inside tumbles into the grass. The nose section crosses Trudeau's path. the moments after for a time for real soul searching. Was the glory worth the risks involved? Minutes later, hearing that his friend Jim Nichol was okay, these thoughts vanish and attention turns to the winner's circle and the next race. Ontario, California, the NHRA Super National, the last event on the 1970 national racing schedule. A fitting end to a season that saw Sox and Martin with four major NHRA Pro Stock Eliminators, including the NHRA World Championships, and these along with eight out of ten AHRA Grand Americans and the AHRA World Championship. Plymouth also won the NHRA Manufacturers Championship the rapid transit system had made its mark. The last race of the Super Nationals marks the close of national drag racing's biggest season ever. But the Plymouth pros who helped make drag racing the sport of the 70s do not rest on their laurels now, not by a long shot, because they all know how quickly the fans will forget if they quit winning.